everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I have a lot of stuff to share with you. I am going to really challenge myself to be quick and concise as I'm talking about this gallon size bag of makeup products that I'm getting rid of. Also a stack of well over a dozen palettes. Just to let you know where we stand with my collection, um, I had not too long ago, I wanna say a couple months ago, two to three months ago, I did a pretty extensive declutter of my collection. It wasn't all on camera. But I talked about some different storage things that I'm doing as I kind of got through that process. And it was extensive in the sense that like everything was coming out of the drawers. I was really analyzing everything and I felt like the stuff that was staying really had a reason to be here. Well, fast forward a few months and now I feel like as I go through my collection to do my makeup, I'm running into more things where I'm like, gosh, I don't ever use that. I don't really need that. Like it's becoming more apparent some things that I could get rid of. And none of this stuff has a whole lot of age on it. I feel so I think it's definitely something that could be passed on to friends and family. I say that because it's been opened, it's been used, and that does violate health codes for me to donate to the Women's Center, the homeless shelter, which I do do on a regular basis and I've been doing that for years. I do have lots of things that qualify to be given there, but these things, you know, it's gonna have to go to someone who's cool with uh, getting some things that have been messed with a little bit lightly. Some things, like some of these palettes I've found, they may actually be donatable because I don't think I've even done anything with some of them. So I'm calling this my little makeup spring cleaning. Maybe things that didn't work so well for me, weren't a proper shade or whatever, could work better for somebody else. So we need some coffee before I dive in. This is gonna be really random because I went through and then I went back to some other things. It's a little bit of everything here. One thing I didn't go through was lip products. I feel like that may be a whole separate experience in itself. So here I have a lot of face and eye stuff. But a couple of primers here from Urban Decay. These have not gotten a lot of use. I've got the Urban Defense Complexion Primer, um, with the SPF 30, which I really wanted to use, but during pregnancy, I'm really trying to focus on using the mineral-based sunscreens, and this is not that. So this is gonna go to somebody who, you know, feels like they can use that. And then also, I had this D-Slick primer. This is just not a texture I really like. It has like this really fast kind of dry down, but still has a tackiness to it somewhat. Just not a fan of that, so I think those will be passed on. Here's another primer, my Master Prime with the SPF 30. Love this, but again, it's not a mineral sunscreen, and I'm trying to stick to things like that. Um, things like my Bare Minerals Prime Time. This has a mineral sunscreen in it. Complexion Red Rescue as well has it, but I want to go ahead and hand this off to someone because it could be a really useful product and I'm going to be pregnant for a number of months, you know, till late October. So let's go ahead and share that with someone. Um, this Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation. I've yet to try a Laura Mercier foundation that I've really gotten along well with. Um, this is in the shade Macadamia and I remember it being pretty yellowy and kind of light and just not the best look on my skin overall, so that's got to go. This Wet n Wild Photo Focus Powder. Could we come up with with a more obnoxiously sized powder. I mean, this is all right. I've used it a time or two, but I'm not in love with it, and it's just huge. Like, I've got a pretty tailored selection of powders in my stash, and I don't have room for anything this huge, so that's gonna go. Also, I wasn't a huge fan of the um, Photo Focus Foundation Stick, so I'm gonna let that one go, as well as this Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. Again, with light foundations that are just a little too warm for me, a little too yellowy, this is fair light sand and it's a really interesting very very liquidy consistency but as I was looking through my stuff I found that I had a lot of stick foundations that I enjoyed way more than this I also have several that are really really lightweight textures like this like the Estee Lauder double wear water fresh love that even more than this stuff another stick I'm getting rid of is the Tarte Amazonian clay clay stick in medium beige not so much a real problem here with the tone but just it's a little bit drier texture and I like to have a bit more moisture I feel like the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue
Rescue Stick has really changed the game for me in terms of my standard for stick foundations. Okay, here's another primer that's going bye-bye. This is my Bobbi Brown Primer Plus Mattifier. Has barely been used. I feel like there are definitely other skin types out there who could enjoy this more than me, who might have a tendency of being a little more oily. It says controls oil and shine, blurs pores, refreshes skin. Might be a great product, but I feel like I'm generally looking for a primer that can hydrate me more. My Neutrogena Skin Clearing, uh, this has salicylic acid in it, and that's another ingredient that you kind of want to steer clear of as far as pregnancy skincare type stuff. So it's one of those concealers that helps treat blemishes, and it's good to have, but just not right now for me, and I think in the meantime someone could use it while it's still a new-ish product. I'm really trying to be mindful of that because there are a lot of situations where I could be like, yeah, but maybe I'll use it after pregnancy, but that much time passes, and it's like, will you really? I don't know. Okay, these jelly products from Wet n Wild, fairly new. I've got the Jelly Highlight, and I just opened this up, and I'm sorry, this is just not an appealing looking situation to me. This is a pretty product on the skin, don't get me wrong. I feel like the tub is about half full and could have definitely been half this size, you know, so kind of bulky. It is pretty, but I feel like I've got so many gorgeous highlights in textures that are a little less fussy to work with. And then I had this jelly face primer and it just feels like kind of a clear gel type moisturizer you're putting on your skin. Just a lightweight moisturizer is all I get from that. So I'm gonna pass those on to somebody who might, you know, have fun experimenting. I found a lot of like limited edition, probably highlighter type products from Tarte. I don't know if it was the Fairies collection or the Mermaid collection or some kind of mythical creature was associated with these. The Tartist Pro Glow Liquid Highlighter and Stunner. I know that's pretty, but I just, again, I don't have the need for this many. And I've got a lot of other liquid highlights that I really enjoy. The ones from Becca are so nice. Um, I'm really getting into this one, this new NARS or Orgasm, the brand new like liquid glowy highlight blush that came out. I've just got enough. So this one in Exposed. I've got a Gleam Team cream and liquid stick. And then this Twinkle Stick, just a cream highlight. All this stuff I feel like is definitely usable, but just not necessarily relevant to my collection right now. Sorry, this is so like unorganized. It's just a Ziploc bag, y'all. That's what happens when you're truly just decluttering. You're taking some stuff out. It doesn't always happen in a perfectly organized manner. You just need to get it out. Um, this is the Candle Glow from Laura Mercier. It's kind of like a concealer and brightener type product. And this is in the shade 1. And I had two of these, 1 and 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is a little more pinky peachy. And I thought that would serve me better than this one shade, which is a little more yellowy. Still plenty light, but I don't really need to be housing two of these. So I'm going to pass that along. My Revlon Candid Concealer did a surprising job for, I felt like, the lightness of this concealer and the yellowiness of this. It's in the shade light and it was so, so yellow on my skin. Like I said, if you go back to a video where I used it, it was surprisingly effective. But again, you gotta look at it in context. How many other concealers do I have? How many other concealers do I love? Do I need to keep this hanging around? Also, this Smashbox Studio Skin um, in light warm, a little too yellowy, a little too warm. Sometimes you just start housing things that are the wrong tone for you and you wonder, why am I not reaching for that? Well, it just never looks quite right on my skin. Here's another thing that I'm going to go ahead and let go of because I feel like I want somebody to get good out of this. The Bye Bye Breakout Full Coverage Treatment Concealer for oily, acne-prone skin and the coordinating powder with that um, because I'm just not doing acne or zit treatment type stuff right now with pregnancy, so I want somebody to get use out of it. This powder from Stila. This is called In the Buff Powder Spray. I'll show you how it works. It comes out of this pump and you just literally are pumping out powder there. And it's a really like smooth kind of HD powder texture, if you know what I mean. Um, it might be fun and enjoyable for someone who, who finds this format appealing, but I'm just kind of over it. And it's been sitting around too long, just I'm not reaching for it, it needs to go. Pumpable powder, like what will they think of next? Here's this Master Fix from Maybelline. I used this in a recent video where I was doing the back of the drawer challenge, right? It's another one of those real HD powders, has a very, very smooth texture to it. Um, I think can blur the look of pores and stuff, but I've just got enough powder and this needs 
needs to go. Bronzers in the wrong tones. City Bronzer from Maybelline. Uh, it's in the shade 300, and it's just this almost like hint of mustard. If I get that feeling from a bronzer, it's probably not going to be the prettiest on my skin. I need more of a like a reddish undertone to them. This one from e.l.f. This is in Forever Sun Kissed. Absolutely love the texture and the pigmentation, but it's just too light. Like this could be perfect on my mom though. This Wet n Wild Palm Beach Ready Color Icon Bronzer. A shimmery bronzer that is just very, very light. Doesn't hardly show up as bronzer on me whatsoever, and yet isn't quite bright and eye-catching enough to be an effective highlight. So that's gonna go. This one from Too Faced, I mean the packaging is adorable here, albeit kind of bulky, but it's basically a gold highlight, true golden highlight, and I just don't love the look of that on my skin. I did hold on to the other shades of this product, but this one's gonna go. I'm really trying to be less obsessed with um, like collect them all mentality or like, well, because I have two, I need to keep all three. Like there are some situations with products where it makes sense, but not with everything. This Master Chrome in Molten Gold from Maybelline, I actually had two of these floating around in my drawer. I didn't even realize it. So I already have one. This one can be shared. Got this Tarte Highlight and Spellbound Glow. This stripey highlight, I'm just kind of like over it, needs to go. Limited edition, not so relevant right now. I found a NYX Ombre blush that I was still holding on to, and I think I'm going to let that one go. This is kind of an unusual shade and works prettier than you might imagine on the cheeks, but just enough blush. I got enough. And then this NARS one. This is fairly new. This is the Fire Clay from NARS. It's all right. It's one of those things I look at and I think, gosh, that looks barely used by me. Do I really need it? Somebody could take this and really love it and enjoy it. Also, these two from MAC. Do you remember when I was talking about this um, Boom Boom Bloom collection and they put out these two face powders that are essentially all matte face powders, but they had that really sparkly overspray and basically what you're left with is a pale pink, like really, really light pink blush and this bronzer. I'm going to pass those along to somebody because, you know, the packaging is adorable. The theme of the collection was great, but that was definitely a low point for me. Revlon Photo Ready Skin Lights in Bare Light. Um, I'm not sure on the age of this. This might just flat out have to go, but isn't it sad that they don't still have this stuff, especially in this era we're in where everybody's loving glowy skin and highlighter type products? Products. Like the skin light stuff from Revlon back in the day was so awesome. And then they did kind of bring it back and that's what this came from, but they need to keep it. Someone needs to talk to Revlon. I've got some eye products here that I think think age-wise they might need to go as well. I mean, any mascara that I've used, I'm not going to try to give to anyone else. This is the Falsies Navy Glam. I'm just not using navy mascara. I've got a clear mascara here from L'Oreal that's probably about half used, and I don't love the hold. I feel like I'm going through the paces of putting gel in my brows, but it's not really doing anything. Here's a brow product from the brand Ramy or Rami. I'm not sure. It's like a universal color on one end and a very, very light highlighter type tip on the other and it seems like this is having texture problems, way too dry, not wanting to transfer onto the skin. This from MAC, this is the Shape and Shade Brow Tint. I'm sure this type of product works well for somebody out there, but for me, I can't make it really show up well in my brows. Can you see this is like a pen style markery type thing? And I feel like I go over and over in my brows and I can't see color. And then it's got a little powder, like spring loaded powder tip on the other end. Just not seeing enough impact from this and I'm really trying to pair down my brow stuff. And then lastly from this bag, can you believe we've gone through this whole gallon size Ziploc already? Um, Revlon Color Stay Eyeshadow Primer. I just don't need a zillion of them. I just need a few, you know, and I'm 95% of the time going for Milani anyway. Hard Candy Eyeshadow Primer. There's actually hardly anything in this tube. This is a little sample. It came with some kind of holiday set. And then this lid lacquer um, in clear from NYX. I suspect this is the kind of thing that would operate a lot like a glitter glue. And I actually have two varieties of a glitter glue type product already. Now guys, we're going to move on to palettes. I went through every palette drawer, took out what I thought I could part with, and a big issue you're going to see here over and over again is relevance. Um, we're looking at some limited edition things and thinking, is this going to come up again on my channel? Is this necessary for me in my future videos? Um, you know, talking about things people can no longer get their hands on, 
or if they would be able to, it'd be like five times the price on eBay or something. Is that something I want to funnel into my content a whole lot? And I'm not opposed to holding on to certain limited edition things that I truly deep down love, but if it's limited edition and on top of it, it's not all that unique and I'm just kind of keeping it because of maybe cute packaging or I just think I should or something, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, here's one that I found, this icon by Absolute New York. It says exposed. It's still in the box. It was in the back of a drawer. I mean, it's completely sealed and taped down. This is getting donated because someone can use this. And at this point, I'm not going to bust into that. From Tarte, I've got my Styled by Harouche shadow palette here. It's kind of like a shadow and face combo. I remember liking the look and quality of this, but I just have not reached for that in the longest time. And being limited edition, it makes it slightly less relevant on my channel. Here's another thing. This was from a Tarte holiday collection and it's gorgeous and I do truly love this. I remember recommending this. I love that burgundy with a splash of gold color scheme here and this is something that I could see someone really enjoying but as far as new content on a YouTube channel I don't feel like that's really necessary. Here's a couple more from Tarte. Like the packaging that draws you in, that makes you take notice, and then shades inside that you have quite a few times over. Like let's just be honest, this can go. It's been very lightly used and could be a great palette for somebody. This one, I actually really loved this palette. I remember being skeptical at first, but I started putting together so many pretty looks because I realized that the combination of like teal and aqua with some of these mauve shades was actually so unique and beautiful on the eyes. So this is a gorgeous palette. It's got just a pretty size and shape and weight to it. Nice little display piece that can sit up that that way, but I'm not going to hold on to that. Urban Decay Troublemaker. This, I got this on some kind of sale. I didn't know why it was not more popular than it was. It seemed like such a great kind of smoky eye palette, and it almost took me back to that smoked palette that they had a while back, like a long time ago, um, that was really good, and I can tell I've definitely swatched this, maybe used it a time or two, but I think this still has a lot of life in it and could be a great palette for someone. Several palettes I found from Coast sense that I think had been sent to me. This one, Summer Breeze, has not even been touched. Like, that's going to go to a fresh new home. When I found this and I opened it up, I was like, ooh, pretty, and I was about to dig into it. Then I'm like, no, if, if it's been this long and you haven't been compelled to use it, let's just share it with somebody who can. This Bloom palette, like, I don't know. I have used it, but it's just not really speaking to me in terms of color scheme. This one cracks me up. It's called Fairy Fuchsia. I want you to find me the fuchsia in there. Like, what? But there may be people that I could offer some of these lightly used palettes to who they might really like it. Um, this Metals palette from Ocalon. It's a good palette. It's nice textures in here, nice pigmentation, but I've got to look big picture at my whole collection and does this stuff really need to stay? This one from Flesh. This was a brand that I found kind of overall underwhelming. I remember doing a video on what they had and this palette was kind of hit and miss and I'm going to let it go. Back with another Tarte one. Um, very, very gently used here. The Double Duty Beauty Shape Your Money Maker Eye and Cheek Palette. I mean, these are shades that I've got how many times over already? This could go to somebody else. My Urban Decay Beached Eyeshadow Palette. I feel kind of bad about this. This did not get nearly enough use. We're coming into a time where I feel like blue shadow is pretty trendy and maybe there's somebody else who could really like take advantage of that. Also, talk about limited edition. This Lorac Pirates of the Caribbean Palette, which I turned out to really, really like. I thought there were some very unique colors in this mix. Don't you love those PJ pants down there? Um, but this had some great options, but it's just not really relevant right now. I strongly like that as a limited edition palette, but not enough to keep holding on to it now. So I think it's interesting to see what people are willing to let go of, what reasons they have. If you want to see more of this kind of thing, let me know. Um, I can do more category by category declutters in the future. Try to make a point to really get out the camera when I'm doing those. But sometimes if we're all honest with ourselves, this is just what you need to do. You need to just sweep through your drawers, just give it a quick look and say, is there anything in here I could part with? So I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you so much for your time and I will see you again very soon. Bye.